All right, today I'm coming to you with a recommendations video. So let's talk novellas. I really love short form fiction. Um, and the novella is an avenue of that. I love to see what an author can do with so little space. And there's a lack of resolution that I feel that you need when you're writing novella. You can leave endings a lot more open. And I think that audiences are more accepting of that. So because of that, because you can like really focus in and hone in on one thing that you want to look at, whether it's like characters or plot or experimental writing. I feel like the novella is like a place to find a lot of like a diverse array of content and I love to consume them. So we have 11 books to talk about today. I'm going in order of um, least popular on Goodreads to most popular on Goodreads. So the first one is Hunting Party by Agnes Desarth. This is translated from the French. This comes in at 181 pages. I think I defined a novella for this as under 200 pages. So this is about a man who goes on a hunting party with a bunch of other men that live in the village he lives in. Um, and he's trying to fit in and he kills a rabbit or shoots a rabbit. And then um, there's this existential moment where he begins talking to the dying rabbit uh, and then you kind of see him stuck out in the woods interacting with the other men you see like back flash like flashbacks to like him and his wife why they move there their relationship uh and and you do get a little bit of a a little bit of narration from the rabbit's perspective. I would have loved if that was introduced a bit more into the novel, but I still thought it was a really solid read. I should also say that while I didn't really like like or love all of these books, I would recommend all of them. So my experience varied with these, but I thought they were good enough reads to recommend them to you. <laughs> okay, the next one is The Hospital by Ahmed Bunani. This is translated from the Arabic um, and it takes place in Morocco. Comes in at 142 pages and it was published in 1990, so it's a bit older. This has an all-male cast. It is really like surreal and absurd. This is a book where I don't know if I really understood what was happening the whole time I was reading it, but I still enjoyed the experience. The language took a bit of time to get into. I felt like I had to work for it. I actually read some of it out loud to myself to get the cadence so that I could read it internally. It's about a man who gets admitted to a hospital and it's it's unclear why everyone is there, why he's there, if any of his interactions he's having with other folks there are real. It was very, very bizarre. And it just had me like thinking a lot. So if you like absurd or sur maybe I should say surreal, if you like surreal, maybe a bit nonsensical, um, kind of books you have to work for. It's short, so you don't have to work for that long, but uh, yeah, I would recommend this. A lot of these are in translation also. So the next one is Song of Luino, Song of a Coal by Okot P. Bitek. This is translated from the Akoli, and it is actually translated by the author. So in the uh, in the edition that I have, there is an introduction by the author that I would highly recommend reading before you read the book, at least in part, because he does talk about, um, it's like a translator note in essence, it talks about how he chose to translate this. Maybe I should talk about what this is about. So this was originally published as two different works. Song of Luino is about a woman whose husband uh, became educated in uh, Europe and she is from a village in Uganda. And she is um, deeply entrenched in traditional Ugandan culture. And he comes back basically being um, westernized and trying to westernize his household, trying to westernize his wife, and basically 
saying she doesn't understand how to be like a civilized human in society. And it is her laments against him. It is written in a poetry format. And while it rhymed in the original Akoli, the author chose in his translation not to rhyme it to get the point across better. Uh, I found this was such an interesting look at um, colonization, um, westernization, uh, culture, identity, identity through the roots of who you are and where you come from. And then Song of a Coal is kind of his response to her. Um, Song of a Coal I found to be much weaker, but Song of Lowino is most of the book. Um, it's probably of my the translated uh, books from uh, Africa that I've read. It's probably my favorite. I feel like I... I, I had to let it sit with me longer. I read it in November and I didn't include it in my favorite books of the year, but I kind of like, I feel like I left it out because the more I've thought about it, the more I've liked it. Um, so yeah, I would just recommend this quite highly. It's one of my favorites from the list. All right, another book set in Africa is Memoirs of a Porcupine by Elaine Mabakanku. Uh, this is translated from the French, and it takes place in the Republic of Congo. This is very inspired by uh, an African legend where uh, folks have a animal double, and most of them are good animal doubles, but this man has an evil one that's a porcupine. And the porcupine is sitting under... It, like, it reminisces, um, so that's why memoirs. Um, it's sitting under a tree, kind of lamenting or reminiscing to the tree, his life becoming this, this human's double and like the evil acts that the, that the human made him do, um, and what they did together. Uh, just it's like nothing I had ever read before. I really liked the memoir format. I really like books that, um, kind of are, are set in like, a present where they kind of know the course of history and how it goes down and they're kind of telling you the story with the insight with with hindsight available if that makes sense and it's 147 pages long did I say how long this one was I don't think I did this one is 151 pages next one the Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Drager. This is the first one on the list that is not in translation. It comes in at 154 pages, and this is really much more of an experimental novel where you're following um, like Halley's Comet that comes to Earth every 78 years, and you see multiple times of Halley's Comet arriving, and with it you kind of follow like brother and sister kind of Hansel and Gretel type story kind of um like you follow the relationship the familiar familial relationship between a brother and a sister um there's also quite a bit of dialogue about queer identity and uh I really loved it I don't think this book will be for everyone but if you're wanting to look for an experiment that really just focuses around themes Maybe pick this one up. Okay. Next one on the list, West by Carrie Davies. This comes in at 149 pages. Um, this is one that I didn't like as much um, as the others, but I still feel like it would be successful for some people. This is about um, a girl and her father they are living in the U.S. in a time where it is still being settled and colonized. Um, and in Kentucky, there are these great big bones uncovered. And th this girl's father thinks that that means that there are dinosaurs here. So he leaves his daughter in the care of someone else and goes west in search of something we already know is extinct. I felt like this could have been fully fleshed out into a longer narrative, um, but it kind of has like old West vibes. Uh, 
the atmosphere is the the part I remember the most as opposed to the plot. Um, but I wanted to put this one on the list because I think some people would like it. And it's quite a bit different than the other ones on the list. Moving forward, we have Miss Ice Sandwich by Miyako Kawakami. This is translated from the Japanese and it comes in at... 92 pages. I'm pretty sure I read this one in a sitting. It was quite short and it is, um, it follows a young boy as your protagonist. He goes to the store and, um, sits in line for sandwiches and kind of becomes fascinated by the woman behind the counter who, um, is a bit different than other people. While he finds her beautiful, society doesn't and it's about his fascination with her and also his friendship with another girl. It was cute and it was short and um, it has a really cute cover. That's all I'm going to say about it. Okay, Down the Rabbit Hole by Juan Pablo Villalobos. Villalobos is translated from the Spanish. I also read this in a setting. It is... 70 pages long. This also has a child protagonist. It's about a boy whose dad is very high up in the cartel. Um, and it's kind of just like him, his obsession with like hats. I feel like sometimes books don't get children well. Um, like you can, it, they feel too, like they feel very precocious or like non- childlike like you're just like no seven-year-old can like mentally have those types of thoughts unless they're a genius um and this felt super realistic to being a child uh he is around a lot of things that he should not see or hear and the way he parrots the things around him as fact even when he doesn't understand what he's saying is like entirely fascinating. It's literally something you could read very quickly in one sitting. I just found it so bizarre and enjoyable. So yeah, I would recommend that. Next, we have back to non-translated works. Oh, next we have Miss Caliban by Rachel Inglis. So this is a classic from the US that was kind of lost and then found a reprinting and made it kind of back into the public awareness. Um, it, w it comes in at 111 pages. And if you've ever seen Shape of Water, the movie, it feels very, very heavily inspired by this. This is about a housewife, I believe in the 80s. Yeah, it was published in the 80s, so 70s or 80s. Um, and it's this housewife who um, falls in love with a sea monster. And I think that's all I need to say. It was funnier than anticipated while uh, I do compare it to The Shape of Water for plot. Um, Shape of Water was tonally a lot darker than this. This was very lighthearted from my recollection, or at least more lighthearted and kind of like playful in what it was trying to convey. And yeah, I, I don't think I need to keep saying I would recommend it. All right, next. Back to translated literature, we have The Blue Fox by Jean. This is translated from the Icelandic, and it comes in at 115 pages. I've read, this is one of the three books I've read by this author, and it was by far my favorite. It takes place in the late 1800s, and there's multiple storylines that are happening. There's one where this hunter is like seeking this rare blue fox. Um, and then there's also a storyline about a man and this woman he takes care of and they kind of come together. Uh, it takes place in a uh, winter, in the winter. So it's very atmospheric, dark, cold, snowy, rainy, like just cold, getting your bones sort of cold. Um, so it's a good winter read. And for the plot lines not feeling like they would come together, I found that in the end, the, they, they kind of coalesced pretty well. So that is my second to last one. And then the final read is Gachar Gochar. This is translated, this is translated by the, from the Kannada. Um, 
and it takes place in India, and this is more of like a family rag, it's like a family rags to riches, where I, if I'm remembering correctly, it's also in told in hindsight. Um, and the family is wealthy now, but they did not grow up with wealth. And it's about their relationships, um, their relationships to things, their relationships to each other, how wealth impacts that. Yeah, there's something very satirical about the way it's told and I did not catch the ending at all. I remember watching someone else's video where they're like, I think I knew what happened in the end. And then I was like, there was something unexpected that happened in the end and I had to reread and then like read some spoilers on Goodreads. And then I was like, oh, that's what happened. So yeah, um, just, it got through a lot in a very short period of time in terms of relationship building. Uh, and yeah, so that is the last book on this list. Those were 11 novellas that I would recommend. Eight of the 11 were in translation. If you have recommendations for novellas in translation, I would love to hear them. I'm always on the search for more of them. Uh, and that is all I got for this video. Uh, so until next time, happy reading. Mm -hmm.